How's it going everyone? Javita here with a building tutorial focused on how to make roofs. This was requested by Dynex and yeah, he said it was the hardest thing, I guess at least for him. He didn't really specify what type of roof, so I'm just going to cover a broad basis of all sorts of different types of roofs and how to kind of make them flow together, uh, particularly the sloped roofs. But before we get into that, uh, I want to do a quick overview of chisels. I, I do plan on doing a chisel tutorial type video going over all of the ins and outs but let's just go over some basics for the time being so we have our square sloped and beveled chisels each type of chisel then has two subtypes or it has a basic and a precise uh, personality so the basic will take an entire edge at a time whereas the precise will take a single corner at a time and I'll get more into that later but we have our uh, stone square chisel copper slope chisel and then iron bevel chisel. Those are the basics. And then we have the precise titanium square chisel, the precise silver slope chisel, and the precise gold bevel chisel. So those are the chisels in a nutshell. Let's see how they actually work. So I have the square chisel just because it's pretty easy to understand. And like I said, this is a stone chisel. It's the most basic and it takes an entire edge at a time. And so I'm talking about this edge right here. Another way to think about it is it's going to take two corners at the same time. So it's going to take this corner and then this corner. Go ahead and hit that. Now we have stairs. If I come over here and I look at this edge, now it's going to take this corner and this corner or this entire edge. And there we go. And so as you can see, we can really only hit a block three times with a basic chisel because it's going to take an entire edge at a time and well we can't remove the entire block using a chisel so uh, there is that now in order to use the precise chisels if i were to hit this block with the current spec that i have it would act exactly like a basic chisel so i need to come over here to my skill tree and activate this skill set that has this chisel epic right here. This unlocks the ability to shape blocks in a more detailed way using precision chisels. So now when I hit this block with a titanium precise square chisel, you can see that I can take a corner at a time. So I can take that corner, this corner over here. Now I have my stairs. I can come behind here and do all sorts of really kind of crazy things. As you can see, taking one corner at a time, and then I can whittle it all the way down to just one corner of the block. So very nice. We come over here, we can see the handiwork of the slope chisel. This is the basic, just taking off of one edge. And over here is the bevel. So the bevel makes a slope as well. It's just a smaller slope. And over here is one corner left of each. So that's one corner left of the bevel chisel. And here's one corner left of the slope chisel so no matter what type of chisel you're using it still works off of either the edge or the corner depending on uh, if you're using a precise or a regular chisel but let's go over here and take a look at all these different types of roofs and Basically, I kind of hesitate to make building tutorials because there's really no right or wrong way to build anything. So what I'm standing on right now, okay, it's the floor, but there's really nothing to say it couldn't be the roof. All I'd have to do is dig out underneath it and voila, it's a roof. So you can make a completely flat roof. There's nothing wrong with that. The only purpose a roof really serves is I guess it keeps the rain off of you, which really the rain doesn't do anything anyway. Uh, more importantly, it can also keep the creatures that can fly and jump away from you. So cuddle trunks and hoppers. Uh, but yeah, here's an example of a flat roof with several different kind of uh, decoration options or details. but. Uh, basically, I usually like to use about two different materials. These just were just some things I had laying around, so don't <laughs> give my color combination choice here too much thought. But yeah, I kind of took some wood, made a frame, filled it in with some sort of fill material. And as you can see, you can give this all sorts of different types of textures. Uh, this was all done using the bevel chisel and particularly the blocks in the center like that one right there and then maybe this over here would be a really good candidate to mix in like a block of gleam or a lantern uh, for a little bit of lighting not only to light the top of the roof but if it's also the ceiling of the room below then it'll light up the room a little bit as well 
Uh, also over here, these blue blocks kind of was the dummy representation of the wall. So I kind of like to have a little bit of an easement or an overhang. And here are kind of the beam studs sticking out, uh, just purely decoration. Uh, chiseled some rock here for decoration. There's all sorts of different options. This would be another cool one to maybe put a piece of gleam or a lantern. Uh, I can make zigzags. Probably if I was going to do a zigzag, I'd add an additional blocks so I could end on the down slope like it starts over here. Uh, here's another variation. And so there's really just a whole lot of different options here. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way. This is just to hopefully give you some examples of how to make things work and maybe some ideas. Uh, but right here, here's a material that's often overlooked for roofing. It works pretty awesome because it almost looks like roofing tiles and it's directional. So as you can see here, you got these deep grooves going vertically. Over here, they're going horizontally. And then over here, they're all just, you know, it's alternating patterns. So there's lots of different ways to put this together. Uh, the orientation just depends on how you're looking or where you're placing. So if I placed a block, say, right here, it would look one way. If I placed it over here, it'd look another way. If I placed it on the floor, it might look completely different or just be oriented a different way. But you just kind of play around and see what it takes to get the orientation that you want. Uh, but coming around to this other side, we can see several different ways to make the sloped roof. Uh, we have the kind of the smooth look. You can work in other materials to kind of look like beams or just stripes, you know, any kind of decoration you want. Over here, I just use the bevel chisel to uh, make kind of a bumpy slope instead of a smooth one. Uh, over here, I did the same thing with the accent material, so you can have kind of like raised ridges or beams coming down. So this one is, uh, again, it's the bevel chisel, but it's uh, smoothed off with these extra blocks right here. And then on this other side, those blocks are missing. And certainly you can do kind of like the classic Minecraft style of kind of stair steps. And the interesting thing is stair steps is that you can also chisel the underneath and make this, I don't know what you call that shape, but it's kind of stairs on both sides. Uh, if you wanted to do the same thing with a slope chisel, you could come over here and just add a block, pull out your slope chisel, and then whack it. And now it's sloped on both sides instead of having kind of a jaggedy um, stair step effect right there. But let's come over here and take a look at all the different finishings. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, as far as I can tell, this is called a gable where the wall comes up to the peak of the roof. And if we come over to the other side, it's called a hip where the roof comes down to the wall. So. So here's the hip, it comes down to the level of the wall, and the gable is the wall going up to the peak of the roof. So kind of two different ways to end a roof. Once you get up to the top, you actually do have some options as far as like your ridge cap or your peak. You could just come to a nice point like that, or you could actually do a blunted point kind of like this, and basically just a little bit of a different look. It also allows the room to be a little bit wider without having to make the roof higher. Uh, the main advantage to having a wider room without a taller roof is that, well, one, you get a bigger room, and two, you won't necessarily have to add plots to the top of your build just to preserve the peak of your roof. So you could have kind of like almost a barn style to where you have an almost flat roof at the top and then it slopes more to the sides, and that way you can save yourself a few plots, or if you really want that pointy peak, well, you can just have a higher roof that may or may not need more plots to protect it. So if we come over here, we can see several examples of kind of the inside corner. So if you wanted to make an L-shaped roof, you have several different options for making an inside corner, as well as an outside corner over here. So here's an example of an outside corner, kind of have this uh, 40 45 degree angle slope. Uh, or you could do uh, just a nice crisp angle right here. And if you're wanting to make a 90 degree valley like this, unfortunately, you kind of get these bumps like this. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. You can try using a bevel chisel and you'll find that you end up with the same exact shape. So 
Not much you can do about that, but if you do want it all nice and smooth, you can use this 45 degree angle uh, valley right here. And that's a little bit trickier to make, but it's all nice and smooth. One issue with this method though, is it does give you this flat area up here, but since you're gonna be seeing this primarily from the ground, you really can't see what's going on up here and it really doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, certainly you could try to continue this slope and make a, a more pronounced peak. Uh, higher than the rest of the roof, but options. <laughs> but let's take a look on how to actually make some of this. So let's start off with the easy one of this 90 degree valley over here. And basically what we're going to do is just start smoothing until we get over to this corner. So there we go. That's going to be our valley going up like that. We can continue kind of smoothing this off. There's the next corner block. And there we go. Now we can pull out our precise uh, chisel to take off just this one corner. And there we go. There's our inside corner uh, that goes 90 degrees. The 45 degree one is a little bit trickier, but it's pretty easy as long as you remember to start at uh, essentially the point of the triangle. So coming over here, you can see this is kind of like an upside down triangle. And if you start at the point and work your way up to the base, it goes a lot smoother. So basically we're just gonna come in here and we need to whittle this corner down to a point. So we can go ahead, smooth this off right here. And there we go. So yeah, that'll work. I thought we had to bring that down to just a single corner, but apparently not. And from here, we're actually gonna have to fill in some blocks. We'll fill that in there. There we go, we can smooth that off. And we're gonna fill in that right there. Chisel that off, we're gonna fill in right there and there. And there we go, we're just about done. Go ahead and hit that. And now we should be just a matter of pulling out our copper chisel and smoothing out the edges. So the reason why I at least suggest to start at the point is because, well, the point is the narrowest part. Uh, you can't like, oh, the point needs to be one block over more. You have to change everything. So if you start at the absolute corner and you work towards the base or the wider side, then that can always be extended indefinitely, but that there's not really any way to extend this point further without tearing pretty much everything out. <laughs> So there we go, we got the 90 degree, the 45 degree valleys. Okay, so now let's take a look at essentially the same thing except on an outside corner. So let's come over here. And so our point is actually now going to be at the top. And when you're coming from the top, I learned the hard way that you do need to whittle this down to a single corner of the block. So let's go ahead and break this down to that. And that's because if you're going to smooth this block out, that's really the only way it's going to uh, meet up and be smooth. And so we're actually going to have to fill in a little bit here. Chisel that down. And this block definitely needs to go. And I believe we can leave this block. I think it goes... Something like, yeah, there we go. And fill in there and here. And then I think all this other stuff is gonna be waste. There we go, that can be smoothed off. And looks like we're gonna need Yeah. Let's hit that there and there. That's waste. Let's 
And there we go. Should be good to get rid of this stuff. And there is our 45 degree outside corner. If you wanted to do a 90 degree outside corner, that's uh, pretty darn easy. Uh, you'd start at the outside and work your way to the corner is usually the easier way to do that. And that's actually going to merge into a dormer, so I'll leave that for later. Okay, so now we're left with this weird jaggedy angle, but uh, yeah, I'll just kind of hit these and smooth it off. And there we go, there's our outside 90 degree slope, so very nice. And over here we have basically a dormer window, so right here we could punch all this rock out and make it into a window. We could have it stick out further than this line or have it recessed or flushed, uh, all sorts of options. You could also come out here and make like a balcony and put a door or just, you know, a window. And basically what we're gonna do is just try to smooth this off, so. Um, go ahead and do that. Comes up to a nice point and looks like and for the dormer windows I usually just go ahead and go for the 90 degree valley because if you try to do the 45 degree it, it just kind of gets lost it I don't know um, don't have that nice clear definition of oh this is jutting out to be a window and then here's the regular roof it kind of tries to all blend together uh, but certainly you could put a 45 degree valley there if you wanted to but we're just gonna do the 90 degree for now and go ahead and just hit that down so there we go as you can see you can have it finished on both sides so go ahead and fix that and now we can just place some blocks on the underside, come over here and use our copper. And there we go. Now we have uh, at least the outline for a window. We could just pull out our hammer and start chisel you know, hammering all of that out. But yeah, there's kind of a <laughs> slope on the other side, so not much room to actually put a window. But um, so as you can see, there's lots and lots of options here. Uh, one tip that can really save yourself a lot of headache is if you're trying to make a roof that follows your walls of your building more or less perfectly, it's going to be hugely beneficial to lay out some sort of kind of uh, guide or grid for your home. So this is a technique I've often used in the past to kind of keep things nice and square and symmetrical to make making roofs easier basically. So I come up with a stock square that, okay, these are this is the basic building block of my home, and then I just add squares on as I want a bigger home. And certainly I could come along and chop out that wall, and now I have a bigger room, Just it's just that it's made out of more of these base squares. Or just, you know, maybe remove a little block and then have a doorway to an individual room. But by doing this, it makes a very nice uniform wall structure to put a roof on that has a very uniform overhang. Or if you don't want an overhang, you know, so what? Same difference. Uh, but if you come over here and you have a wall kind of like this, it's just kind of going all over the place. You're going to have a lot harder time making a roof that fits this. However, you're not without options. Probably the easiest way to handle this would be to just go ahead and make a roof of a certain square or whatever shape you want and just have it overhang the walls. Uh, you could even use that overhang to maybe make like a covered patio or something. So just because you have irregular walls doesn't mean you're going to have just an impossible time and you have to start over. There's still options to kind of work with it. And let's say you wanted either a more severe or more gentle slope. Uh, you could certainly do something like this. And basically we just have a slope, two blocks, slope, two blocks. And that makes for an overall steeper roof. Uh, same thing over here, uh, slope, two blocks, slope, two blocks. And you have a more gentle slope right there. 
but uh, certainly all sorts of options. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this as long as it meets kind of the criteria of maybe holding creatures out or maybe you just don't want it to rain in your house. Uh, really, there's no wrong or right way to do it. And certainly a lot of this detail is pretty hard to see from the ground depending on how tall your roof is. So you don't have to just kill yourself with making everything perfect. Uh, my home in early access used many of these components and you really couldn't tell that there was uh, this flat area up here or maybe that there's these bumpies right here. Certainly as you're building it, these can be a little bit annoying just because, oh, you want it to be nice and perfect, but from ground level, they're hardly noticeable at all. So just don't get too worked up about it, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, I think that covers how to make a roof, or at least these basic types of roofs, uh, pretty well. This was Javita. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Also, if you like my channel want to get cool perks, check out my Patreon page. Until next time, peace.